Hello gamers and welcome back, I'm Rob of course, or Warshack if you want to call me by my in-game name, and today we're going to be talking about the top 5 sleeper cards in Journey to Angoro. Keep in mind that these cards are what I think the sleeper cards were, I'm sure everybody's going to have slightly different opinions on sleeper cards, um, but these are mine. Keep in mind for those of you who have no idea what the fuck a sleeper card is, it's kind of a card uh, that everybody maybe overlooked, they're like yeah the card seems okay or the card seems good, maybe not seen, maybe will not be seen a whole lot, but maybe once in a while. Um, so it's definitely a card that took everybody by surprise and is found a lot more often or um, has found like a deck it fits in perfectly and the card is great and uh, people thought it was going to be like a, you know, just whatever. Um, so without further ado, the first sleeper card that I want to talk about, it's going to be the giant anaconda. So <clears throat> hold on. Still pretty early, so I need to get my coffee sips in. So the giant anaconda, uh, everybody looked at the druid quest, the um, the jungle giants, was like, you know, this is going to be perfect for ramp, you know, most of the time ramp decks have creatures that uh, cost five or more attack, uh, giant anaconda fits the slot, granted it does have three HP, but that's not the purpose, the purpose is for the cards to come out, and um, so people tested it, they played jungle giants, they found out jungle giants sucked, and they're like, well, giant anaconda sucks, because jungle giants sucks, and the reason jungle giants sucks is because that by the time you have 10 mana, you can probably play one to two big creatures anyway, and if you're playing all of your big creatures in one turn, you're just prone to AoE, so it's almost better for you not to play that many creatures per turn, because you want to play around cards like Volcano, you know, uh, Brawl, Flame Strike, stuff like that. So Giant Anaconda was kind of like, eh. Plus it has three HP, like I said, and for seven mana, that's really kind of bad. Um, so people are then, well, like, what about Ramp Druid? Um, so people started playing Ramp Druid, and the Giant Anaconda slithered its way into the deck and um, has been a really big staple because uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Ramp Druid, uh, I'm pretty sure I did my deck guide a couple weeks ago on it and it, the deck is so much fun. Um, a lot of the cards in the deck have above, again, five or more attack and it being able, like you drop a giant anaconda on seven, let's say they use two creatures or one decent sized creature to trade into it and then it freely summons like a bog champ, and, you know, it could summon a death wing, uh, either death wings to be in fact, um, and stuff like that, Tyrant Mantis. It just has so much value in one card, and if they just don't kill it, you can make trades. Five attack can kill just about anything, uh, for the most part, in regards to uh, you know mid-game minions or early-game minions. And uh, if they don't have minions to kill, you're pushing five damage face a turn. So it's kind of a card they have to kill, and if they kill it, they have to deal with a minion that's even bigger than that. Um, so when people were first reviewing Giant Anaconda, it wasn't people ramp druid wasn't in the mind it was quest druid and quest druid ended up not being a thing so giant, giant anaconda left people's mind but because of the rise of ramp druid um it's actually a staple in that deck uh which i'm sure a lot of people kind of weren't seeing maybe some of you are uh, or some of you did uh but for the most you know the, the majority of people, it wasn't something that uh, struck them as, you know, going to be a staple in a ramp druid, and that quest druid was going to be awful. It was kind of the other way around. Quest druid was going to be crazy, ramp druid was going to be bad. Um, so it was just one of those kind of sleeper cards that came out of nowhere, and it ended up being really, really good. The next one's going to be the Hydrologist. I knew people were going to think this card was going to be okay, you know, just the fact that it's a, you know, a two mana, two, two Murloc, and it discovers a secret. You're like, yeah, it's going to be good if Murlocs are good. Um, but it was impossible to say how good Murlocs were going to be. And I highly doubt people were going to say, yeah, I'm going to put this card in my control sh or control paladin. It's going to be my mid range paladin. It's going to be in my aggro paladin. It's going to be all over the place. And that Murlocs were even going to be now a core part of the paladin class like we're seeing war leaders hydrologists oracles um uh, bluegill finja there it's like this whole giant murloc package now is almost essential to paladin and i don't think anybody was ready to say that was going to happen due to the fact that this card was going to be introduced um into the set and because this card is so powerful and it's a two drop you know following this great two drop up with like a war leader or um I believe the rock jaw it was a, the two mana two three murloc that gives plus one plus one that also had a, a lot to do with the uprising of murlocs but i think this one is even much better than the one plus one not that you wouldn't run one or the other definitely run both of them uh, but i think this is the definitely the murloc that allowed the new package to kind of shine and um, like i said people knew it was going to be good but this card exploded like it is in every single paladin deck probably right now like if not in the high 90s percentages of players playing this card and i don't think anybody could have uh, said that, that it was going to be that popular especially since a lot of people didn't even run um 
Paladin Secrets ever since Secret Paladin, and that hasn't been around for quite some time. And then the reason they also didn't think it was very good is because, like I mentioned, nobody played the Secrets, um, but Kodo Rider and um, Redemption are now like some of those key cards you're looking for because if you can Kodo Rider and you know back your Hydrologist, you get infinite Hydrologist value, um, or if you Kodo Rider something like you know a Stone Stonehill Defender, uh, a Tyrion, and uh, stuff like that, a Curator, you just get so much value just from this one mana card that came from already a 2-2 a two, two creature that synergizes with all the other murlocs in the deck um so not only with the synergy but just the secrets themselves uh were actually i think uh kind of looked over for sure and the redemption of course with cards like um Tyrion and things like that that have uh uh, death rattles and uh divine shields make it really annoying uh when you have to kind of play around them and there's so many uh, paladin secrets too that sometimes even picking a bad paladin secret your opponent will play around it and they'll actually cost them more damage than if they would have just did their play in the first place so there's a lot of kind of juking out you can do with secrets and this just adds another level to that so the next card we're going to talk about is going to be another Paladin uh, card. Again, a card that people probably thought were going to be pretty good, but would we see two of them in every Paladin class across the board? Probably not, right? You're just like a six mana spell, buffs a minion, doesn't really give it that much attack. It does give it a lot of HP, but it's just eh, probably not. Might be There could be better things. But <laughs> this card is a two of every Paladin deck, whether you're even playing the aggressive Paladin. I've seen it in there, too. Uh, I've seen it in there, too. And then, of course, the control Paladin, it's fine. Buff Paladin, it's great. Um, so this card, and then the fact that the card that it brings out is another 2-6 with Taunt. So you're basically, for six mana, you're getting a 4-12. And that's just crazy. And it has Taunt. So that's just crazy value, and it's so good against aggressive base decks. Um, so let's say if the Paladin is versing another aggressive base deck, this Paladin deck, it has like almost, I don't want to say infinite Taunts, but a Pirate Warrior dealing with, let's say, you know, a 4-8, and that's if you put this on a 2-2, two, two, um, and then another 2-6. I mean, you're just asking them for an impossible task to get through. That's just a giant wall. And then on top of that, it only really costs 6 mana, which is expensive, but it's not... It's not like a call of the hound or a call of the wild, right? Where it costs nine mana and you're generating a whole lot of value. This is you, know, you can play this in the mid game and definitely uh, swing things in your favor with just one spell. Also, it can be generated by Ivory Knight, which is pretty popular right now on some of the control paladin lists. So definitely a card that I didn't when I reviewed it. I said it could be good. It depends, you know, how big the card is when it brings out. I had no idea it was going to summon another two six. And then when that happened, I was like, all right, well, maybe a one of. And then it happened to be a two of every list almost immediately. And I was just like, holy shit, this card is good. Um, so definitely one of those cards that uh, off the bat when I reviewed it, didn't think it was that great. And then it definitely uh, popped up. All right, so I know that this one, um, a lot of people, it, I actually, before I get started with that, um, this was in our top five legendaries to kind of look at, and it was, uh, you know, added in there with the warrior legendary, uh, but again, with the rogue legendaries, everybody kind of doubts them. When they, people saw Caverns Below, they looked at this card and said, this card is shit. Play four minions with the same name, that's almost impossible. Giving everything a 5-5, five five, that's too slow. 5-5 five five isn't that big of a deal. Long behold... This this is one of the this is pro this is one of the best legendary quests along with the warrior one and um, it's probably one of the most popular rogue decks as well and the deck is very powerful like it, you guys if you've played ladder at all you know that this deck can beat you most of the time they're completing their quest before turn five and they've winning but before turn six or, or seven because they can have five five one mana minions that charge down your face and deal up to twenty to thirty damage in a turn if they have the proper um, return spells and charge minions so the deck extremely powerful and um definitely one of the sleeper cards of the set because originally everybody said it was gonna suck and then people started playing with them like holy shit this card is crazy um so i just wanted to uh, note that in there that is just one of those cards that everybody was talking shit about everybody um there might have been a maybe one or two players or uh, pro players that said you know this card may not be as bad as it seems but it's still pretty bad uh, but for the most part people had lost hope in the quest card or the quest or the rogue quest legendary um because they they just figured in comparison to some of the others it just didn't have the best bang for its buck and it did so it definitely deserves that sleeper slot and um 
definitely but it just shows how hard deck not des deck deck testing but reviewing cards before you play with them how hard that really is um and we've seen time and time again the blooper videos of you know uh some of the huge streamers you know they're reviewing these cards and their reviews are just completely skewed you know what i'm saying like mysterious challenger and dr boom people said those cards were going to be awful like why would i ever play this um and those you know those were key cards of some of the most important decks or if if not some of the most impactful uh, powerful cards in Hearthstone still to date. Um, so it just shows how hard, you know, making these cards are for, you know, not only development team, but also the players like us uh, who are reviewing these cards prior to playing with them, how difficult that truly is. And then the last one we're going to talk about is going to be the Stonehill Defender. So again, um, I think uh, that's admirable said that this card was going to be pretty good. I, I heard him mention uh, while he was casting a few times and um, he was one of the few people who believed in this card. I thought, you know, it's probably will be found in Taunt Warrior because I figured, you know, a taunt creating a taunt's good and it'll fit into Taunt Warrior. Makes sense, right? But then all of a sudden, people started playing it in Paladin. People are playing it in Shaman. And it's popping up all over the place uh, because this card, not only is it a 1-4, which is pretty annoying for most decks to deal with um, in regards to trading their smaller minions in. So if you're playing against, you know, a pirate warrior, um, a token druid, you know, they're killing at least one minion trying to get through this taunt, um, and they have to hit this before they hit your face, so it's basically a three mana heal for four if, you know, they're attacking it with their smaller minions prior to hitting your face, uh, but a lot of the fact that some of these taunt minions that it's discovering, uh, if you look at Paladin, they have Sunkeeper, which we went, also went over in our top five best legendaries out of this Ungoro set, we've got Tyrion, which is just a top five legendary in general, that card's fucking insane, and then we have, um, like, a what is his name um come on it's the three mana two two divine shield whenever it does damage here so wicker flame burn bristle there you go you got that guy um so there's just a ton of great taunt uh, uh cards and paladin for warrior of course you know we have ally armor smith uh we've got the tar lurker we've got the drakes and all that good stuff so warriors covered and then we look at shaman we got alec here uh we got the hot spring guardian um I'm sure I'm missing a couple. The new one, it's like the uh, four mana, three, five. If you summon an elemental, it gets divine shield. Um, so there's just a, a sizable amount of really good taunt minions. You got earth elemental as well. Um, so definitely a card that was maybe was considered good in one deck, but then all of a sudden he's found in almost, you know, every paladin list is running this guy. And a lot of the control shaman list, if not every control shaman list is running this guy. And that's something that, you know, it was impossible to say. And, um, uh, the shaman uh, version with this guy is actually quite new most of the time it went from control warrior or I shouldn't say control warrior I should say taunt warrior and moved from there to the paladin and then the paladin now to the shaman I think is the most recent deck like I've mentioned the control the control shaman to throw this guy in there and um, It's good. Um, it's good that this guy is on top of that He's a neutral and he's a rare so he's not even that hard for you know You free to play players to grab him if you're really interested in playing, you know uh, the warrior or the paladin uh, class especially a more uh, control play based version is because he's very cheap and he can grant you you know you haven't been able to afford a Tyrion this guy can get it for you and he's just a rare uh, which is absolutely fantastic um, so with that, that's going to wrap up our top five kind of sleeper cards. Uh, for those of you who want to add on or think I missed something, feel free to leave that in the comment section below. But just keep in mind that these were kind of my picks and what I saw. I'm sure a lot of people are going to have maybe some different opinions or something close or maybe a card or two off. Um, and that's what the comment section is for. So for some of you players looking for additional information or some more uh, insight from other players into what they thought the sleeper cards are, um, Feel free to look there for some, uh, like I, I mentioned, additional information. Um, so as always, thank you for watching, of course, and I'll catch you in the next episode. I'm Robert Warshak, and happy whatever the hell day it is.